my teacher made us do this homework assignment. History is really boring. Yeah, and why do I have to help him with his homework? It's not that bad. And besides, we're going to make it a family adventure. I think this is the place on the map. Hey, this place looks interesting. Let's go. We can have our picnic. There's a nice grassy area. Yeah, it looks great. He looks busy. Let's not bother him while he's doing his work. Oh, he's not bothering me. I'm Bob Clemmy. Nice to meet I'm you. I'm sure glad you all stopped. Well, thank you. What is that thing? And what is it for? This is a post that marks the path of the Chisholm Trail. Oh, cool. I first became interested in the Chisholm Trail when I was in the ninth grade in uh, 1939. My teacher was Dewey Bickle. Dewey Bickle was the one that got me interested in the trail. I've enjoyed uh, marking the trail and studying the history for all these many, many years. History. It's always a thrill for me to go out and still find cattle and trail rut after 140 years. They're still visible. My teacher is making us learn about the Chisholm Trail. Mom, what's the Chisholm Trail? Well, I learned about it in school, but I'm not sure I can tell the story very well. Mr. Clemmy, can you tell us the story? The Chisholm Trail started uh, in uh, 1867, which is about two years after the Civil War. 1,000-mile historic Chisholm Trail, known as the world's greatest cattle trail, was like a major highway in its time. The famed trail came just after the Civil War. During the war, Texas ranches were unmanaged, leaving the southern prairies packed with cattle. At the same time, markets to the east were in great need of beef as existing cattle had been slaughtered to feed the armies and civilians. By war's end, cattle worth $3 a head in Texas would bring up to $40 to $60 in Chicago and New York. The problem was that no railroads yet reached the Texas Plains. Running from the South Texas Valley north to Abilene, Kansas, the Chisholm Trail was responsible for the movement of millions of Longhorns. The four-month journey pushed cattle quickly from Texas into Indian Territory, where the pace was slowed to fatten the cattle on free grass and water before again pushing north to the Kansas Railheads. The trail and segments remained in continuous use until shortly before 1889 and the opening of the unassigned lands in Oklahoma. This brought fences making the use of the trail impossible. Later the extension of the railroad into Texas eventually sealed the fate of the Chisholm Trail. Can you believe how hard that must have been? I'm sure grateful for cars and highways. But why do you have these markers? I uh, had always wondered over the years where the Chisholm Trail came through Enid. Well, in about 1985, I was down in the Garfield County Courthouse, and I uh, saw this big book. And I pulled it out, and I laid it up on top of the counter, and I found out it was a copy of the original government survey that was made of Garfield County in about 1872 or 73. I saw a dashed line going at an angle up across the township and I looked along the side of that dashed line and it said Abilene Cattle Trail. That's what the trail was called uh, when it first started. Later, of course, they uh, named this uh, cattle trail after Jesse Chisholm, an Indian trader that, uh, that went through this area. I found out that I was crossing it every time I went to town. I decided to mark the Chisholm Trail every place it crosses the section line across the Cherokee Outlet. And I counted and it took 79 markers. I had a uh, metal form made. I cast these posts 
uh, which weighed about 200 pounds each. And in the face of each post, the word Chisholm Trail is embedded into the front. Then I painted the post all white and the letters black. I placed my first marker on November 30th, 1990 on the Tom Fuchsa farm a mile south of Bison. I uh, decided to go ahead and mark clear on down to the Red River. I uh, used a, a total of about 400 posts. I placed the last of my markers on the trail on the Express Ranch north of Yukon, Oklahoma on September the 19th, 1997. You did all that by yourself? Well, I had some help from my friend Glenn Payne. How do you take care of all these markers? I do what I can, but the Boy Scouts help a lot doing their Eagle projects. What is that? This is a cowboy monument. What's this story about? In the early 1870s, the Indians frequently went on hunting expeditions and sometimes would come across a cowboy. They would deliberately murder him. There are stories of two such incidences from the year of 1872. Tom Best rode south from Kansas to join Texas cattle drivers, but was killed by hostile Indians a short distance north of this monument. Ed Chambers also rode north with a herd from Texas, and he too was killed by Indians about a mile southeast of here. There are many lone and unmarked graves of these cowboys scattered over Oklahoma. This monument says, on this spot lie buried two cowboys who gave their lives in winning the frontier to civilization. All the storytelling's making me hungry. <laughs> Would you like to join us for lunch? Yes, please, Mr. Clemmy. We want to hear more stories. I want to hear some more about cowboys and Indians. I, I have an Indian story, and it's about the Indians and a freighter named Pat Hennessy. I can't wait to tell my friends I saw a real cowboy grave. Yeah, that was really cool. Imagine living here at that time. That's a really sad story how they died. The Indian Territory was a dangerous place to be. Word around the area was that Indian hostilities were on the warpath between Darlington and Buffalo Springs and were planning to raid on the Chisholm Trail. Buffalo Springs Stage Station was a popular stopping point along the Chisholm Trail for cattlemen as well as freighters like Pat Hennessy. After spending the night at Buffalo Springs on July 4th, 1874, Pat Hennessy was warned of the Indian activity and was advised not to go south. It is reported that Pat Hennessy scoffed at the thought of danger and ordered his men to their wagons. They headed their teams down the trail southward toward Bullfoot Station. Pat's orders were to deliver their load of coffee and sugar as soon as possible. It was not long before Pat and his men were outnumbered and tried to defend themselves from the Indians' brutal attack. However, they were overtaken and Pat Hennessy and his men were massacred. They took what they wanted and set fire to the rest. A cartridge was later found jammed in Hennessy's rifle and it is believed he could have fought off his attackers had his rifle been more reliable. Whatever occurred that fateful day, Pat Hennessy remains immortalized by the town named after him. Ew, didn't anything nice happen along the Chisholm Trail? <laughs> yes, many uh, good things happened along the Chisholm Trail. Maybe you'd like this story. Just north of the Kingfisher Garfield County line, there was a cottonwood tree. The story behind this tree revolves around an Oklahoma law that said if you received a marriage license in a particular county, you had to get married in that same county. After the run, the town of Enid was the largest in the area and had a large variety of products that the smaller towns did not have. People from Kingfisher County would come to Enid to shop. Sometimes, after a day of shopping, many couples would go to the courthouse to get a marriage license. 
but since they received that license in Garfield County, they could not be married in Kingfisher County legally, so they would gather under this tree to be married. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here today to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony. The marrying tree, as it came to be known, was also registered as a witness tree. By the power vested in me by the territories of Oklahoma, I now pronounce you man and wife. This tree has witnessed two land runs and some of the last of the Longhorns coming up the Chisholm Trail. That was a special story. When I grow up, I want to get married under a tree just like that. Girls. I think I remember hearing about a place called Bone Creek or something like that. Bones? I like bones. Oh, yes, you must be talking about the Skeleton Ranch. Skeletons? Is this a scary story? Oh, no, not at all. With that Civil War over, Wichita Indians were attempting to return to their former home in Eureka Valley on the Washita River. They caught cholera after interacting with white army troops in that area. Devastated by that disease, they managed to get as far as a creek located a couple of miles northeast of the present town of Enid and they could no longer travel. With many of those people dead and dying, some fled in a panic, and the burial of the dead was an impossibility for the few who remained well enough to wait upon the sick. Even today, their bones remain scattered over that area, thus the name Skeleton Creek. I believe I've kept you folks long enough, and I believe it's time for me to get back to work. Thank you for telling us those wonderful stories, Mr. Clemmy. We've really learned a lot from you today. Maybe history isn't so boring after all. <laughs> and maybe our Boy Scout group could help clean all these markers. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mr. Clemmy. The stories were great. No, thank you. I'm always ready to talk about the Chisholm Trail.